The gun is the weapon of choice for those killing people on the streets of New Orleans. Ex-police lieutenant Dwayne Sherman wanted to take me to a local gun show. These shows are common across America. The constitutional right to bear arms has to be questioned when you consider the number of people being murdered in this city every year. How easy would it be for okay. me now to buy a weapon? How much of a check would he run on me if I was a Louisiana uh, citizen? He'd just look he at would, my, my, my take, driver's he license. He would take a, uh, an official ID, like your Louisiana driver's license, a Louisiana yeah. ID card. He would run a background check on you through the federal government to see that you, don't, you do not have any felony convictions mm -hmm. uh, and that you're not under protective orders, things of that nature that would normally prohibit a person from possessing or owning a firearm. If you pass all of those things and you qualify as a citizen, then you can purchase a firearm, pay for it, and walk away with it. OK, just say I am uh, a person with previous convictions. Uh, what's stopping me getting you to buy me a gun? Nothing. Very little. Um, it's illegal. The law says you can't do it, but it does happen in some cases. Also, I mean, you know, Again, all these guns here are, are made to be concealed about a person. They're not, they're, not, they're not to fit inside a side holster. They're actually to be concealed about your person. So the person that you bump into, have an argument with, can pull that weapon. But, but why, why does it have to be concealed? Why not wear it on your, on your hip? You, in Louisiana, you can, anybody can wear it on their hip as long as they're not a felon. We have an open carry law in Louisiana, as long as you're not an alcoholic beverage outlet. So as long as I'm not drinking alcohol, I can wear anywhere I like with a gun on my hip. Correct. These are assault weapons. These are ones that you'd find in Afghanistan, in Iraq, right? That our military carries, with the exception that they're semi-automatic. Yeah, but if you keep pulling your finger quickly enough, Correct. it becomes automatic. This yeah? is, but if you look at the number of guns that are owned by Americans, the number of people killed is small, while it may be higher than the rest of the Western well, civilized world. Is, that's for sure. But this is, I mean, you look around, you have all of these guns, all of this ammunition. This is good, honest Americans exercising what our founding fathers gave us. What, the right to bear Amendment. arms? Correct. Look in other parts of the world where you have a, an oppressive government, and uh, many Americans would say that this government has become an overly oppressive. And the right of the citizen, the Minuteman, the soldier who, who, who made us a free country, it was his own private rifles. If I can trust the government to have soldiers with assault rifle, why doesn't my country trust me to have an assault rifle? I think the tourists that visit New Orleans would be shocked at the levels of violence that this city experiences on a daily basis. The truth is, this problem was around before Katrina, and now it is only getting worse. In the poorer areas of this city, the streets are deserted, with people too afraid to venture outside their homes. We've tried to talk to the police on a number of occasions to find out how they attempt to keep the peace, but they have refused to talk to us. One man who knows how this city works and is prepared to talk is retired NOPD Lieutenant Dwayne Sherman. During a checkered career, he received numerous complaints from the public, ranging from brutality to illegal searches and rape. He was cleared on all charges. But he was also revered by his colleagues as a workhorse and an unparalleled leader who worked the most dangerous areas of this city. So, Dwayne, this is one of the tougher areas in New Orleans, right? Correct. And it's an area that you used to police? Correct. In terms of the violence that goes on here, and we know the violence isn't, isn't necessarily gang-related, but it can be narcotic-related in terms Correct. of people fighting for territory, right? Correct. But, but that fighting that goes on is generally between families or individuals. It's between those groups engaged in the narcotics trade, but it can branch out in retaliation uh, style killings. So, i.e., it's more, it's more clan-like. It's family against family. Yeah, even if it don't start out like that, like I say, it'll usually start out, you know, we, we have some kind of problem, and if I shot you right here, your family would come after me and shoot me, and then my family would go back and shoot the people. And it's just, it's, it's just endless. When I was the assistant commander of this district, which also included being the head of the detective unit, in two years in this one district alone, which is not a very large district, we had roughly 110 murders in this one district. Of course, that didn't include non-fatal shootings, which are double or maybe even triple. 
So the, the number of fatal shootings. So you don't, the city said two, 200 non-fatal shootings, about 100 fatal. I think the last check in the city uh, for last year, at the end of last year, they had roughly around 400 non-fatal shootings. Not a big city, is it? No, and not as far as most people think of big cities. There are some 50,000 houses in this city that are still unoccupied after Correct. Katrina. I mean, for instance, look, this, Correct. I mean, just explain to me what this means. Well, that's a, a typical uh, resident search type uh, sign used by FEMA, the Federal Emergency Management Association, yeah. who supervised all of this. And what it does is it lets other first responders know that this residence was checked after Katrina. The top number gives you the date. So 11 9 of 2005, this residence was searched. The bottom number indicates whether anybody was found deceased inside. You can see the zero, so they didn't find anybody. That was a casualty. Yeah. And then on the left and the right half, that's designations given to individual search units by FEMA to track who actually came into this residence. So 3,505 was the people and NF. A NF was, is, is the initials for whatever group that had that, that did the searches in this area. <laughs> Traditionally, this is a city where people would sit on porches and socialize with one another. This custom is long gone. Most are too frightened to venture outside for fear of violence. The blighted and abandoned homes in New Orleans have become a breeding ground for criminals as they are easily accessible and the police have little knowledge of what's going on inside. I'm meeting up with two New Orleans gang members to get a better understanding of life on the streets and the reality of a gun culture spiraling out of control. OK, thank you. The youngsters is crazy, is wow. I don't play with these little boys out here. Also, I got record G recognition. You see this cross right here? Mm -hmm. This cross means I was a murderer. Yeah. This cross right here means I wasn't playing. This is not for decoration. They, you know, if they deal with me, they got to come right. They got to know their homework when they fuck with me. Were you here when Katrina struck? Yes, I was. I swim in that dirty ass water. I was out here breaking and writing, stealing medicine, dope, just to get kill my, my fucking sickness. Why do you think it is so violent? Why is it so violent in New Orleans? Shit, man, fuck, it's violent because fuck, they don't want to give a nigga no fucking job, you hear me? They look at a nigga, they like, fuck you a hoodlum, you hear me? So fuck. Yeah. If you don't want to give it to me, you hear me? And I'm trying to do the right thing, you hear me? Fuck. Well, fuck it, look it, I got to go take it, you hear me? What fuck it, you hear me? What about what about the um, the police force? Fuck the police, you hear me? Fuck NOPD, you hear me? Cause it's like this here, you hear me? They don't help a nigga for nothing, you hear me? They just gonna see a nigga locked up behind the fucking bars, you hear me? What the fuck we gonna do, you hear me? We get out of jail, you hear me? Then they don't want to hire us because our fucking background. Well, fuck a background, you hear me? So what what you do then, mate? How do you survive? Fuck, man, I survive, fuck, I get it how I live, you hear me? I take what I want, you yeah. hear me? Believe you that, you hear me? You better and where do you, and where, where do you go to take what you want? Fuck, I go anywhere, fuck. You can go down any, at any time, fuck. It could go down right, right now. now. I you hear me? Yeah. Fuck. You might got want something out of You hear me? It's, Believe it's that. about me right now. Shit, and about the police, you ever hold by holding court? I will five times lose, I will hold court right then and now. If police roll on me and I'm hot, it's me or him. I'm holding court right here. And what you mean by that is you would shoot, shoot out. You'd shoot he it out. You'd shoot it police. out. He kill me, I kill him. Fucking right. We'll hold court. We'll take it to trial. In your hand now, you got a you got a pistol, yeah? Yeah. This shit make my dick hard. Fucking right. I get a nigga in with this. Yeah. Real quick. How easy is it to get one of those on the set? Like fucking getting a fucking cold drink. Getting a cold drink. Yeah, yeah like getting a fuck. fucking cold drink getting from the, the stove. Getting a penny or something. Shit. Fuck. And that gun could have actually been used before by somebody else. It's yeah? a throwaway. Fuck. Hit yeah. him nigga up and throw it away. <laughs> yeah. The take what I want mentality affects people of all ages. Verna is very typical of what's happening here. She's a single mum struggling to cope, with a young son facing a prison sentence for armed robbery. 
tomorrow is a pretty important day, not only in your life, but also in Rachel's, your son's life, yeah? It's a new beginning for something. I don't know what it is, but it's a new beginning for something. But he could possibly go to prison for a very long time, couldn't he? Yeah. I'm hoping not, though. I'm praying. Yeah. Because he don't want to see He's a 13-year-old boy, isn't he? Right. Never been away from his mom. Like, you know, the most he's been away from me is like a summer vacation. And that's by his aunts in Texas. Your son has no previous convictions, particularly not for the crime that, that he's now pleaded guilty to, to armed robbery. Yeah. What, what, what do you know about what happened? Rashawn had a gun on him, and what happened, he didn't... They say he didn't point the gun, but he had the gun in his hand while he was committing a robbery to somebody. They, had, they held up an old lady, yeah? Yeah, and an older man. The robbery was committed with, a, with another young man who lives around the corner, yeah? Yeah. In that neighbourhood? Yeah. Do you know what the maximum sentence he could be given tomorrow is? He can be given um, anywhere from probation to juvenile life till he's 21. So, so he could be going away effectively for seven, eight, eight years. Eight years. If that happens, what? How are you going to feel? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. He's my only boy. He's my only son. I don't know. How are you feeling? Scared. So, have you have you spoke to your mum? about why you did it, why you and the guy when you robbed those people. What did you say to her? I just told her that I was just being crazy that day and that at the moment. I was just happy. I got a, I got a gun in my hand and I did it. Like, I just did it. <laughs>